Hello people. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a simple door that opens when somebody gets near it and closes when you move away from it. So back in Unity, here's a modified version of the first scene from the last tutorial. I move the spawn point over here and I place the pickup object on a little stand here. So I'm going to add a door right in front of it to get to the pickup object. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, create a cube. It looks huge because it's in my view. Place it at zero, zero, zero. So now if you hold control, you can like drag the cube and it'll move in one meter increments. Pretty nice. Because um, I know that my character is two meters tall, I'm going to make the door itself four. And also just set this to two. So if we're looking at it, we now have a gigantic wall in front of us. So our goal now is to move this cube whenever the player gets close enough. To do that, we'll need to do an animation. First thing for that, I'm going to create a new game object. I'm just going to do some simple parenting here. And then put the cube inside that. So I'm going to then rename this to door. I don't particularly like how this is a one next to it, but whatever. So for animations, you could put an animated or you put an animated controller on that game object, and within that you can animate anything that is a child of it. So this cube is the child, so the cube is what we'll be animating. So first step, create an animate tour. I'm just gonna do some scene or stuff here. So create animator controller. All the stuff you can name however you want and misspell however you want. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it onto the door. Door now has it. And so we get this thing. If you do not have this animator window, you can go up here to windows and then go to, well, animator, and then you will also need animation. So this window here is for the animator state machine. What that basically is, is how to describe that. You'll have different states that things can be in and you can like trans to different other states. Not the best description. Better to show it off. So clicking on the door, door, make sure the door because it's an animator controller, go to the animations tab and say create new. So what we're going to do is the open animation. You can create animations through different methods. You can press this record button and then just like move the object around. But then the other one you can do is go to add property, say what object within the child hierarchy over here and then say the exact item you want. So I want to say the position. It automatically adds into the timeline, so from zero to one second, and everything in between is 60 frames, because there's 60 seconds, or 60 frames per second. So right now, if you press the play button, nothing happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cursor all the way to the end. I'm going to find the cube, and then I am going to move it two meters over. So now when I press the play button, it moves two meters. Next step over here, now that we have the open animation, I'm going to change the loop to off. I do not want it to loop. So back inside the animator, it's added a new state. That's nice, but when you press the play, it's going to automatically go to that and open at the start. Well, you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is create a new state. It's going to be empty. I'm, I typically just say, like, close. It's not going to be doing anything. I'll right-click it, set as a default, so now when it starts, it'll move to this. And then I'm going to add a transition and go down to open. So right now, it's going to transition directly to open, but we want to make it only transition when we want it to actually open for us. So I'm going to press this little arrow right here, click bool, and then I'm going to say open. So now whenever this is checked, it means it's on, unchecked, it's off. So click this. I'm going to add a condition, I'm going to say open, only when it's true, I want you to transition to it. And uncheck has as a time. That basically says that if this did have like an animation length, it'll wait till it finishes before moving down to this next one. So if we press the play button, we'll see nothing happens. But if you click this, it then transitions to open. But when you uncheck it, nothing happens, because we haven't set that up yet. If we go back to our animations, I'm going to do this the easy way. Take this, duplicate it by pressing Control D, rename it to close, take, click on door, move this into door, 
animator closed, move it over here, make him transition. So when you're at open, I'm going to transition, remove that, add a new thing. So when you're open, but then open turns to false, I want you to get it closed and then zero. Oh, that's why. This is also the enclosed. Uh, I'm just going to rename it to empty. Technically it is closed, but this is the closing animation, or will be. Next, new transition back, and then also put it when it open is true. So when it opens false, it goes to closed. When it open is true, it goes back to open. Go back to the animator here, closed, and now take this position. I'm going to be lazy, move it over here, paste it in, take this one, well, delete that one. Move this one. I probably didn't even need to delete it. I could probably just move them both over. So now, inside this animation, if I can move my mouse properly, it'll close. Loop time is still off, both of these. So now I can go to the animator controller, press the play button, and we will see nothing happening. Press the open, it opens. Doesn't move back. Click uncheck it, and now it moves back. But we're in the closed state. That's exactly what we wanted. So now that we have it animating open and close, we need to tell it when to animate open and close. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a box collider. Since this is a one by one, you can barely see it inside there, but that is going to be what we will do to trigger when the player goes through it. So first step, make it is trigger. I don't want the player to stop on it. I just want them to go through it and know that something was there. And since the box here is like four meters tall, I'm just going to change this one to four. I'm going to change this one to two to match the size of it. But now I'm also going to change the Z to three. So it's just slightly bigger. Yeah, let's change it to four. So now when the player touches this, we're going to trigger this to open. And when they leave it, we'll trigger it to close. The next step is to add a VRC trigger. And on this, we will do on enter trigger. So basically click that, and now we have this little menu where we can edit what we want to happen. Not the best tutorial to describe about this, so I'm just gonna say always unbuffered. Basically, whenever someone joins, if it has triggered before, it'll save the last one. It doesn't really matter in this, so I'm just gonna set it to always unbuffered so it never saves anything. So next step, what layers do we want this to trigger on. Since we want for players to walk in, I'm going to set it to only player, which is all other players, and then player local, which is you. So now only when it sees a player and or you, it will open something or trigger this. You can make it get to do like any object if you decided to put an object in there, but we don't need to do any of that. We don't have any other objects right now. If I wanted to, I could make it like trigger on this pickup object. So next step, we needed to tell it to open the door. So basic, or click the plus sign here, go to basic events, animation bool, click this, click the plus sign, and now we need to set the door as the animator. And the variable we set, open. Operation, set it to true. You could do toggle, but I like to be very explosive. Like, I want it to open when this happens. Sometimes things can reset and it'll be weird. So, when the player walks through, this will now open. But we have nothing to tell it to close. So, now on this drop down again, click on the exit trigger, click add. If you did it all in that order, everything will just set the exact same thing, and you can just go to open and set the false, and now it should all just work. Alright, in VR chat now. And so. We don't have the best view here, we just got this like a wall in front of us. But if I walk forward, the door opens. If I keep going, I can pick up the object. Oh, but the door closed. Shouldn't matter, I just walk closer. And now I have the object, and the door's closed. Yay! So we have our door. It's really basic. It opens when somebody moves in, and it closes when somebody moves out. But that's about it. Let's say we wanted to do other things with that instead, like when it opens, maybe we also turn a light on or something. And when it closes, we turn that light back off. So what we can do, which would just be adding more things to our animations here, what I typically like to do is go inside your animated objects, create like another one, and, or another game object within that, 
doesn't really matter what it's called. I just called something, so like open. And then I'm going to create another one here, which is then going to be on close. So both of these objects will then be used to like determine when something is open or closed. First step, turn it off. It sounds kind of intuitive, but we'll be using the animation to turn them on. So add a new component, add a trigger, add an on enable trigger. Open, always unbuffered because I don't do that. And so now when this is going to be enabled, it'll do something. So I know I said in my example to turn on a light, but it's actually much easier just to say turn on and off an object. So I'm going to create 3D sphere. This is completely up to you on what you wanted to do, but this is just the example I'm going to use. So when it opens, say now this sphere will also appear. I don't know why I moved it in that order, but okay. So sphere, turn sphere off. It's not gonna happen until it's opened. So inside this opened object, I'm going to say click button, basic events, set game object active, and then I'm going to go in here, click the plus sign again, I'm going to take the sphere, drag that in, and I'm going to say true. So now when it opens, I'll turn the sphere, or, I'll, or well, turn this on, which then it will trigger the sphere to be on, which this, you can do whatever you want with it. And now, making things simpler for me, I'm going to take that and copy it over. And then I'm going to say false. When it closes, it turns it off. There's no on disabled, so you kind of have to use another object to indicate when something is on something or when you want something turned off. So this is set up, but it has not been like used in the animation, so it will never be called. So I am on the door object here. I go to this open, and I'm going to say add new property. Open is active. It is not set. I am going to set it. Make sure to go also to the end of it because it is also not set, but also check it. Oop, wrong button. So now go back. It is oop, on the entire time. Press the plus R record again. Move to closed. Do the exact same thing, but for the close, check it. And then move over and check again. And that should now turn on and off the sphere when you play in the game. So back in VR chat, we got the door, there's no sphere. I move forward, sphere appears. Move backwards, sphere disappears. Yay, animations. That's pretty much it for this basic tutorial. One thing I just noticed is that this is not buffered one, but whatever, didn't copy the same. So one other thing that you could do, which I don't really want to explain that detailed in this tutorial, but when a player exits this thing, but there was somebody already inside it, it'll actually close on them, even though there's still someone in there. Now, it's possible to get around that. It would basically be involving like messing with this state machine a lot. You'd have to like count every time a player enters in and then like transition appropriately when one person enters and one person leaves. It's kind of complicated, but I can go over that in more detail in a later tutorial. For now, that's everything, and uh, have fun making animated doors. Thanks for watching.